Boom! Welcome to Dave's Desk. I'm Dave. This is my desk. And today, we've got the primal calamity himself, Nui Moko. <laughs> this is actually a first for me. Um, I'm actually doing a review of a mock I've actually already reviewed. Um, I've had this mock for about 10 or so years. Maybe a little longer. I'd have to go back and look at the first posting, but this mock is middle-aged as far as my collection goes. Um, but the reason I am reviewing it, even though I already have a review, is one, I'm doing it in the Dave desk, Dave's desk style. Two, this mock has gotten a huge upgrade. I've revamped a bunch of things, and I want to talk about all of that. Three, my good friend, Azon Bobcat has requested that this be reviewed and drew being a good friend of mine i am happy to oblige so this is drew stuff go check it out it's really good he does some of the best bionicle art i've seen anybody do because he does a more mechanical style of art and it's got like this 70s grungy retro vibe look to it it's phenomenal Great guy, great artist. He's done some edits for me. So I really appreciate the guy. So when he said he wanted to see New Emoko, honestly, good reason to bring New Emoko back out because there's actually a lot to talk about here. So the first thing that really got overhauled from the original version of New Emoko to the new version is the feet. I completely went back and like tried to give it like true looking theropod feet now the downside is they're not the most stable you, there's a lot of finagling it takes to get this guy to sort of stand up like i got him nice and posed now but like you gotta like really get him in the right position for him to just want to stand there i kind of opted for authenticity you know and, and, and appearance over over uh functionality and that particularly regard but it does as you can see the mock does stand up on its own you know he's not going to fall over and i make you know uh my shelf up here uh where i've got my mocks i uh, do a nice little shake test where i make sure that uh nothing up there is going to fall on my head <laughs> and he's stable enough, enough to go up in the corner of the shelf so so anyways um that got a big overhaul. Uh, I did a lot of like additional armoring. Um, like the legs kind of got sort of retextured. I added stuff like like just this here, just for some cool shaping. Uh, one of my favorite bits that I added were these. Um, they're they're actually like the 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 um, wheel fairings from like the old two thousand three race car stuff. Uh, that's what those are from. Um, now, the old race cars used, uh, like, these weird little dowels to, like, hold everything together to kind of keep everything rubbery. But the cool thing is they actually do connect with uh, pinholes as well, you know, Tectic pins. These. So you can't actually use those on these to connect stuff. And so if you ever see any of these floating around and you're like, what the hell are those? Go ahead and gra actually grab them because they are actually useful as parts. Um... Like, the core structure of New Emoku actually got a lot of a lot of overhaul. Uh, one of the things, we're going to flip him over and look look at his junk. <laughs> um, one of the things I want to highlight here is the uh, shock absorbers. Um, the core structure of New Emoku, like, right in here, is uh, sort of rigid. But, you know, there's uh, a lot of uh, CCBS. And, like, actual, like, the CCBS uh, hero, hero bodies are in there. And then there's a CCBS bone that kind of sticks out. And that's actually what holds on the leg. And it was jostling around a lot, sort of in this, like, socket, right? You know, the, the sort of what it ends up being the, sort of this hip socket that I created. And to keep it from, like, wiggling around and, like, he wasn't very stable, I actually added shock absorbers 
to the model that you can see right there. And that kind of keeps them back in place where, where it's going to stay put, but still allow the hips to move and everything. And, you know, that's one of the things I love about CCBS is it's, um, it's flexibility while to be rigid, but also still mobile. And that uh, gets us into the first lesson that I want to talk about today, which is recognizing the strengths and weaknesses of each Lego system. So New Emoko doesn't have the most system on him. Uh, he's primarily Technic, Bionicle, and CCBS. There is a little bit of system, like right here. That's that system, like Samurai Armor Plate. I do use it here and there, just kind of to fill in like the really small gaps where it makes sense, like right here. Um, and so that's like the, the strength of regular system is that it's small and it can fill in gaps where it needs to. But to make system really structurally rigid, you need to use like bracket pieces, which Lego uses constantly. And that's fine, but that's kind of what system has to do to be structurally uh, sound. Whereas Technic, it's really easy to make it like lock into itself and stay rigid. Like that's what lift arms are good at. And that's what, uh, Technic does. Bionicle for me, I feel like the strength of Bionicle is in its aesthetics. Like that's kind of why we like it is because it looks like this. It looks like that. It's got the little details of like the pistons and stuff like that. And, you know, I, I feel like Bionicle works on an aesthetic level and as far as like actual function, I always found it to be kind of clunky. Like G1 Bionicle is actually kind of clunky. You got to use system along with it. Like if you don't use like regular system parts, like lift arms and stuff, you can't really build big, expansive uh, Bionicle figures. And I would say I, I sort of mastered that pretty early on, you know, with things like Mototar and Ryak. So like I, I've definitely built really big bionicle mocks in the early days and you know i i always just kind of found like okay this system has to like you have to double triple quadruple it up to get anything of size to work with itself and that brings me to the the strength of ccbs it's very flexible but also very you know stable I don't even want to say it's rigid because like one of the strengths of ccbs is how flexible it is, but it's very stable. And because CCBS bone parts, you know, CCBS can actually branch off of itself. You can stick a, you know, something here. You can stick uh, something in here. And in fact, I think this is the part that is Nui Moko's hip. Is It's snapped into here. There's parts underneath. And then the actual hip is this piece. And then the um, shock absorbers are actually connected to the... Um, pen holes. So I actually think this is the exact piece that's actually holding on Nui Moko's hips. You know, and that's one of the great things about it is because there's multiple ball joints you know, in sockets on each of these pieces and, and the way Lego developed these pieces is they can sort of branch off of themselves and almost become fractal. So you know, that's one of the, the great things about CCBS that I really like is it allows a lot of mobility. Uh, and stable motion too. Um, you know, as you can see, there's some CCBS right here. And then it kind of comes up around here and sort of helps hold on the whole leg. And it sort of moves in concert with the leg. Right? And that's all achieved using CCBS. And then the other thing is... CCBS, I feel like, really blends well with Technic and System because it's a lot smoother. But it still has, this, you know, the, the bones and stuff underneath still have a mechanical look that it doesn't look totally out of place with uh, Bionicle. You know, I, I feel like it, it, it hits a nice middle ground. So that's lesson one. Use the, the, the strengths and weaknesses of each system against each other. Okay, so now for the next lesson. Um, the, the second lesson I kind of want to go over today is what I call motifs. Use motifs within your mocks. Now, what I mean by that is reuse the same parts 
in multiple different places on your mocks. And like, for example, the uh, this Borok uh, element, it's here, 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 and even up here on his on his neck. You know, basically on the side of his head, right? And I even have it in red down here on his leg. Right, so I that part comes in a few different colors, but it came in blue and red. So I used it where it made sense. You know, I felt like it flowed with a mock, like on on the leg. It gives a nice bit of little sort of muscle density to the leg and keeps it from being too flat. Here, I actually use it uh, using those uh, rubber lift arm parts to uh, sort of get it to flow here. And that, you know, like you can see one here and then I use like a string of those rubber lift arms to sort of anchor it all down to get it in this nice angle. A specific uh, suggestion, use these more. These things are fantastic for getting weird shaping, getting things to kind of stay where, in a weird angle that isn't quite system or on grid or anything like that. These things, I, in more recent years, I've used them a lot more and I just, I keep relying on these more and more as I become more experienced as a builder. These things really help you get away with some shenanigans. <laughs> and like, I use them on the feet too. Like that's, they're, they're stabilizers on the feet as well. And actually my uh, phone stand here uh, is made out of Lego. And uh, the, the rubber parts are actually what hold in the phone. And it's actually clamped to my desk. So definitely try s some stuff like that, but. If you use the same part over and over again, reusing the same part throughout your mock can help with a sense of familiarity. You know, it, you don't have to use a, a, a ton of different parts. If you have a bunch of the same part, you can sort of re reiterate things that, you know, ideas that you've conveyed with the mock in one spot in a different spot. And the other thing it, it helps with is sort of a, a sort of a cohesion of, of, of Maybe not necessarily textures because I've never been a huge like, oh my God, the texture is super important. Uh, it needs to be super smooth and aesthetically pleasing. Like, it's bionicle. Take the bionicle parts and shove them together. If it, if the texture is kind of messy, well, look, that's the that's the name of the game in, in bionicle mocking, if you ask me. Like, that, use the parts and don't worry about, you know, the, the finer details. I like putting parts together and creating a shape out of these these weird sort of disparate looking elements that Legos produced and taking things that otherwise wouldn't necessarily really look right together and bringing it together into a cohesive idea. So, but having different little bits of texture of the same part shows that texture in different places like sort of that that sort of um flexible rubbery look right there like if it, it feels like you know this model is maybe a little bit more organic because it has this cool texture to it but it still has a little bit of a mechanical element to it as well because like the pistons here and the um the mata feet you know um it feels a little mechanical because of these and you know this element here you know, and like the, the tubes up top here, you know, uh, it, for me, building a, a Rahi or, you know, a, a bionicle animal was always sort of the interesting mix between organic and mechanical. And I think the, you know, the 2001 Rahi really showed this really well because they were, they literally had like tank tracks and, and like mechanical elements to them. And they actually had, you know, uh, play features that were mechanical. And so I've always sort of carried that idea into the, the, the few Rahi I've made. Rahi aren't my real specialty, you know, as far as mocks go. But when I, when I do create Rahi, I like them to feel sort of like a, a blend between mechanical and organic. And you can do that with like the parts that you pick out and then reuse all over the place. So, lesson two is motifs, you know, reiterate an idea throughout the mock. And then, um, the last idea I want to convey is look at the parts as just individual shapes and figure out where they can maybe work. 
One of the great examples I want to point to is this is the blue, uh, the Borak uh, Krana tray. You know, the thing that holds in his Krana? Well, it came in other colors, and here it's in blue, and I just needed like a nice chunk of, 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 of part to kind of fill in this space here. And once I sort of dabbled around with it and moved it around and tried different orientations, I realized it was almost purpose made. It felt like just like the perfect part to put right here. So, you know, if you want to build a mock like this and are struggling with it, I would say look at the parts as just simple shapes and connection points and figure out like, hey, does this fit here? It does fit here. How do I make it fit inside? How do I make the internal structure all hold this all together? You know, like, and the inside doesn't have to be pretty because like, you're never going to see it. Like, okay, this fits here. This fits over top of this and this fit inside of here. Like these parts all just happen to kind of flow into each other. And it's literally just a matter of, uh, okay, if this goes here, then this fits here, then this fits here, then this fits in here. And just experimenting with what parts sort of collide up against each other in a way that looks good. And it's not like I plan it. It's not like I sit down and draw or I use LDD or not LDD, but like studio or, you know, it's not like I pre-plan these things. I literally just sit down with a giant mess of parts on my table here and I just pick up parts and I hold them up to other parts and I figure out what works you know and that's kind of actually how this mock got built I literally just held this uh hero factory uh version one shin part up to the dragon bolt mask and I'm like oh that looks like a cool dinosaur and yeah that's what it was and that's what it became and it became red and blue because this was blue and this was red. It's literally all that took. So definitely experiment with, uh, you know, just shapes. Like just grab shapes and see what works to make the idea. Because if one specific little section maybe doesn't look the greatest, that's not the most important part. The important part is the idea overall. Everybody's going to look at this and say, wow, that's a T-Rex, you know. I, I don't think anybody but, say, the most anal of us, you know, bionicle builders are going to be like, oh, that shaping in that specific spot doesn't look that great. And, oh, you know, the textures really clash with each other. I'm like, who cares? Like, I built a T-Rex. It's cool. People like T-Rexes. Although, I mean, it's not specifically a T-Rex. It's basically just a theropod dinosaur. I built a big dinosaur. I built a red and blue dinosaur. The idea matters. The concept matters. The, the 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 minute details are really just not that important. So grab your parts, experiment with shapes, and and see what works. So yeah, that'll about wrap it up for uh, this episode of Dave's Desk. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Hey, you were gonna leave this video without liking and subscribing? Not cool, man. Like the video. Subscribe so that I can grow on this channel and make more videos. Do you want more videos? All right, that's what I thought. So push the little red subscribe button, and push the little thumbs up button, and that'll help my channel out. Thank you, and have a nice day.